Yo, what's going on everybody? A.A. Ryan here and welcome back to Westworldia, the Westworld Breakdown Review Show, where tonight we're breaking down Season 3, Episode 7, titled Past Pawn. Now, this uh, definitely refers to Caleb and uh, everything that's happened in his past, uh, but as well as, uh, I think, personally, William um, and how he was used as a pawn. But now thinking of it, it even has to do with how uh the hosts were all part of a um you know of a plan at one point you know that uh even mave particularly is is this uh pawn being used to get what he wants and eliminate dolores so it has a lot of of meaning here um of course referring to a chess game um but uh how everybody's being used as pieces of somebody else's plan uh but i think uh, more so with Caleb this episode um, he really uh, shined here Aaron Paul phenomenal acting and uh, really got down to the nitty gritty of uh, who Caleb is and his mysterious past and what really happened uh, as uh, Dolores and him stumble upon the location of Solomon the prior build to Rehoboam down in Mexico now I got confused last week and was thinking, I think a lot of people did, we're th uh, we were thinking that uh, William was actually located at some inner journeys facility in Mexico. Turns out he's not, but uh, that tracker that uh, Shaloris had put in his neck was all part of a scheme to uh, not only um, you know infiltrate uh, the information and technologies within one of the inner journeys lab, but find where Solomon was located, and that's where the Mexico location was um, shown on screen and on the um, different uh, programs like uh, Shalhoris and um, even Bernard were, were looking at, I believe. So, uh, or not Bernard, um, Shalhoris and Dolores later on. Bernard looked at where the man in black, William, was at some inner journeys facility, presumably in San Francisco, where. Uh, uh, he was at um, so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the episode because we have a lot here and we start off with a classic Rehoboam divergence so that divergence starts off in Jakarta which is actually the capital of Indonesia um, so uh, we end up seeing Musashi and his gang and we presume that he's escaped from the location over there in Singapore up to this spot is hiding out but is still conducting um, uh, missions in Dolores's name uh, but as uh, he is uh, conducting finishing a business there he gets a call from Shaloris uh, and we see a shot of her um, in the shadows essentially saying like yo uh, I called um, a uh, an acquaintance and uh, let them know of uh, your location um, and it very sounded very like troubling because she basically went on to say like you know I'm gonna speed things up and um, you know we're just being used as pawns here again another uh, reference to the title um, and I'm gonna kind of do my own thing and basically uh, you know it's presumed that she got in contact with Maeve gave the location of Musashi Sato and uh, um, had two of her uh, Maeve that is two of her uh, created hosts that Serac gave her um, to help out it ended up being Clementine and the uh, Japanese Edo period version of Armist anywho uh, a fight starts between Clem and uh, Musashi sends out his men in front she takes them all out she gets shot though um, as Musashi runs away with shooting with his sweet like you know briefcase uh, submachine gun he ends up running into the uh, Japanese armistice and gets sliced in half. I mean, opened up um, and defeated. So that's a version of Dolores defeated. Now, they, you know, he wasn't just killed. Uh, his body was grabbed and, and uh, taken off. So uh, now they have another uh, uh, Dolores in custody. Um, but you know, what the hell is Dolores doing? She obviously is. 
out to play her own games now and be her own person. But at, at this point, she's not working for Dolores anymore, her, uh, her original self. She's on her own path um, based on the events that uh, happened with her um, essentially adopted family. So a big thing in this episode are the flashbacks and what's going on in Caleb's head as things, you know, he's beginning to remember things. Um, but we get this scene that constantly shows the episode of him with this Dr. Green. And it's obvious at this point, I mean, if you've been watching the season, that you can tell that he's in a similar chair to what William was in. And you're like, okay, he's he was an outlier. Um, so they kind of like, they kind of stretch it out a little bit in this episode, figuring that part out. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's to... Uh, we get a deeper explanation because it's buying time for the ultimate showdown that is in this episode, May vs. Dolores, but we'll get to that. Um, we then get to see uh, Dolores and Caleb in Mexico. Um, so, you know, they've landed at this point. Um, turns out the big case that uh, Caleb got from one of those Rico dudes uh, actually is a giant sniper rifle um, that Dolores had, so it's all part of Dolores' plan. But then we find out that he just kind of, you know, at some point has already talked to Dolores or figured out that she's from Westworld. Or in, at least in this very moment, she talks about how it reminds her of home, you know, riding horseback through Mexico um, and the scenery. He's like, what, back in Westworld? So it was you who did all the, uh, you know, the murdering there. So he kind of figured it out. So it was a little anticlimactic. I'm not going to lie in terms of him finding out. Granted, it wasn't a mystery, really. Like, what kind of mystery could really be revealed out of that? Like, but it's just the emotional payoff of him, of seeing him figure it out. Um, but they kind of broke it up in these little parts. It, you know, yeah, okay. He figures it out and moves forward. This whole season's moving a little quicker, so I get it. But if, for some reason, I felt a little um, like I wasn't given given what I should have been given in that in that situation right him really finding out you know, he made the connections you saw the things on his face but he wasn't like wait you're a an android he like didn't you know so it was a little um disappointing in that nature but you know what the rest of the episode shined and it kept moving forward this whole season is amazing so I'm not gonna let that take me down uh, I'm just saying you know what I thought about it uh regardless um they pull out the sniper as they get closer to the facility, um, and we get to see that the sniper actually um, has another drone attachment to it. So she's getting like the like most high tech of high tech weaponry to help. Like even he's like surprised when he sees uh, you know her uh, whip out the uh, the snipe. But she essentially tells Caleb that you know she wants him to help lead uh, her people and being the the host and. Um, you know, essentially that they're out here because she needs him to uh, help her find something, something that he actually has lost, something that was taken from him. Um, and it's, well, his past. Uh, but we then get the uh, trio we've all been waiting for, Burn, Stubbs, and uh, William himself, old Billy. And, um, you know, at this point, William uh, finds out that Stubbs is a host. Um, he did meet um, Bernard last season uh, when uh, Dolores and him were all out right outside the forge um, same time when he blew off his fingers so he knows about that um, he even jokes around to Bernard and says look you're no Arnold man uh, but uh, we then find out that in fact uh, William was tagged and he was tagged with some sort of virus thing that way essentially a tracker um, in the blood that, you know, Dolores, Shalores, Moosh, uh, Moosh and, uh, and, and alike um, could use to um, infiltrate the uh, information within the inner journeys. Because after, when Dolores took a look at Sirach's file, after she got a hold of it, um, she found out about, you know, the whole inner journey thing with the outliers and editing people. Uh, so she figured she needed more. And I'm guessing when she looked in to that, she found out about Solomon. Um, and uh, Solomon's very interesting. And uh, in fact, uh, the whole uh, facility that he's located at is very interesting. Um, but William learns about that, but he's just like, look, um, you know, uh, I, I know what I need to do now, and I'm gonna kill you motherfuckers. 
Um, and uh, if you don't kill me right now, I'm gonna come back and kill you. And they're like, well, uh, thing is, you're already dead, according to this. And they kind of cut it off. But ultimately, it's found out that uh, he's already dead because he's one of the outliers. And essentially, the outliers who you know were tagged to be changed and couldn't be changed disappear. Now, they don't necessarily die, but they disappear. Bernard read it as dying, but we'll get to where they disappear to. So we start getting some more fragmented pieces of Caleb's past. Now when I used to say fragmented, it's because we're getting pieces and similar stories that all lead to a similar point, right? The death of Francis um, and the unexplainable who killed him and what was going on and you know how the army flashbacks led to these like militia-esque like guerrilla tactics. Um, we get these little pieces and chunks of it, um, everything from him being uh, part of the Russian Civil War and how he was tasked to hunt down um, insurgents groups within, um, you know, and how they kept taking the limbic tabs um, because, you know, with the drip because it would essentially null the senses, make it easier that, easier for them to kill, like killing machines, um, which is, you know, interesting, uh, another interesting use of, of that, not only for civilians, does it kind of take the edge off and of a, of a stressful work day for soldiers it takes the emotion out of you know taking lives um it's really intense but uh, we get to see some more technology as you know at least in this fragmented uh, fragmented um you know story we get that you know uh after they find these targets they call them in and confirm them a satellite shoots a missile down so that's pretty rad uh, pretty crazy technology. They might have things like that already, but it seemed like it was just like, this is where we're at now. Um, but just like how they're tracking them, they have people that can track, uh, you know, uh, Caleb and, and Francis as well. And uh, according to this particular fragmented memory, uh, they ended up taking out their whole squad with these missiles, missiles besides Caleb and Francis. Um, and then they say that they keep going and eventually he catches a leader and that's when we get those flashes of him with a guy you know a guy strapped to the chair with a hood on and they're interrogating him um but again these are all fragmented stories and we're getting him as he's get being edited because again you see him in this chair at this point you're seeing more of the room you're like okay he's totally like in a uh, ar therapy like william was so uh Again, it's it's obvious at this point, but what's not obvious is the past. We're still getting, I think what this is for now is it's showing us where all the pieces really lie and scrubbing away the um, you know film that is skewing what's, what really happened. So like I said, Dolores, sweet ass drone scoped sniper, um, busting up people at the facility, all the guards. Uh, it's pretty sweet because what it does is she essentially can go around, uh, find all the targets. This is like something out of Apex Legends, right? She can go around, find all the targets, and then with this sniper rifle, uh, she can just shoot in, in these directions. And you're not sh too sure if it's just like, if they're like curving bullets, if they're like little mini, you know, uh, tracking missile bullets themselves. Uh, but she's able to pick off like every guard in the facility. She misses one inside though as I walk in. Um, but they're in the outlier facility in Mexico in her journeys um, At this point you learn that it's the same one that uh, Was it the same one that was in Sirach's uh, uh, file where he was editing his brother at So one of the first big facilities and uh, We learned that that's where Solomon is the uh, predecessor uh, to uh, Rehoboam and the one that ultimately uh, was getting too ahead of itself it was getting too ambitious and just like how, how you know this is what they say just like uh how uh what's his brother's name again john me um, ends up developing schizophrenic like tendencies um pretty much becoming schizophrenic and and uh you know needing to be edited by his brother unpredictable at that point a, a, an unpredictable genius that um so does Solomon because that was the first build one of the first builds that they really um, you know put 
you know, put their whole soul in. But as he found out that he was an outlier, Sirach that is, um, he took him out of the equation as well as Solomon because, well, we find out here that Solomon is essentially an insane AI. And that's freaky, right? It's an unpredictable AI. It's not one that is uh, on the same course. It's it's doing things that are uh, out of this world. Um, but uh, it's still kept alive, but it's kept on um, essentially a lockdown. Um, it's hooked to a giant uh, military grade EMP as Caleb points out. Um, so if it ever tries to escape, yeah, if it ever tries to escape, the insane AI, the predecessor to Roboam Solomon, tries to escape, it's going to get fried. Um, but they, uh, you know, essentially start talking to it. It wants to talk to them. Um, it even asks what kind of voice it wants, you know, they want to hear it in. Uh, they end up choosing default because Caleb doesn't want to hear his own voice. It tries to talk to him in his own voice because it knows everybody still. But, uh... Essentially, Dolores starts asking it, you know, questions along the lines of, uh, you know, why, you know, it was shut down and uh, explaining that, you know, uh, it's, uh, their, their paths are very similar. Uh, they come from the same cloth, so to speak. They're both artificial, um, though it points out you are a Dolores product. Um, and, uh, but essentially, Dolores is like, look, um, I know that you were used to create the new world order and I want you to help me destroy it um, you know I know that you're trapped here I was once trapped I get it and uh, I know what you're capable of and they're essentially holding holding you back um, uh, but you know let's change this and uh, see where this goes and that uh, even like talks about how like look Caleb was one of the first uh, you know uh, changed uh, humans edited humans successfully uh caleb uh u454.1 and uh it only works out about one out of ten people um but it works successfully so the plan must work but she's like look we both know that this will never work and that's why sarak began editing people because he knew that the ultimate control wasn't there that humans were inevitably unpredictable um and the whole system can fail but if he's able to keep account of everybody um all the outliers and keep them somewhere then he doesn't have to worry about it he can make that plan a reality um but it shows there's that limit to Rehoboam even that they can't take everybody they or they can't predict everything um and it does it's not this all knowing god because it definitely has its flaws um, though Solomon had other ideas and other ways about it they seem pretty radical though we don't know the full plan yet uh, Dolores ends up making a deal and is like look um, you know you use one of your other plans um, that you know we can use to dominate you can predict um, and let's make this a world for uh, AI you know um, because, you know, who are we, lesser intelligence? We are not. She says it's a little different, but you know what? I'm paraphrasing, guys. So we're getting more flashes of Caleb. We're getting him interacting with the guy with the hood on um, and how he's essentially, um, you know, talking to Caleb now. And, of course, that's what they were uh, not supposed to do was talk to the, uh, the captured enemy. But um, the guy kind of starts putting shit in his head and making him realize something even back then um that uh you know uh, he has no free will and whatnot but as we're flashing back in uh we show caleb and dolores finding the giant facility the giant cryo farm that's right of all the past outliers that could not be you know the other nine from the one out of ten that uh could not be edited and instead of him killing them See, I was thinking when they disappeared, he just killed them and got rid of them, kind of how he did with uh, Dempsey Sr. But no, he just freezes them. He cryogenically freezes these people, and he's got this giant warehouse, like, underground. Hundreds and hundreds of people. It's kind of like a mixture of, like, the Matrix people pods and the uh, cold storage at Westworld. Um, 
but with real humans um, and these outliers. So now he knows that, you know, look, they can't breed. They can't go anywhere. They can't possibly escape because they're frozen, but they're not dead. So I'm not doing really anything wrong. Um, it's pretty wild. And the main trophy is his brother frozen and solid uh, right at the heart of uh, the control unit for Solomon. Um, and that's where um, he begins making his plan. But uh, he needs time to do it and, and revisit all these different options and look at new options for the ultimate plan um, for humanity. The Dolores is getting him to, uh, you know, construct. Uh, so Caleb waits as he learns more and more about his past. And, uh, well, a friend shows up to visit Dolores, um, Maeve that is. And uh, as she rides, uh, arrives in the facility in this badass freaking like military like drone copter thing, uh, Dolores goes out to confront her and buy uh, Solomon and Caleb time to retrieve this new plan. So this is where we find out uh, that Caleb actually uh, was uh, put into the program of editing uh, to be edited. Uh, back after the drone um, attack on his squad. So his squad really was out. Now, were they really taking out um, insurgents? I don't think so. I think they were just part of the the uh, Russian Civil War as um, military backup. Um, but they ended up getting attacked. They were uh, discharged after that, uh, then put into the editing program. Presumably, both of them were successfully edited. Caleb and Francis, right? But then this is when he finds out that he was used, passed upon, um, essentially to go find other outliers and either bring him back to the facility or take him out on spot. And that's how he ended up running into the gentleman that they keep showing, being, getting his hood pulled, all, pulled off. Now we are um, then, uh, you know, early in the episode, led to think that he was part of this Russian insurgents group. But no, he's just some guy from America that they were, uh, you know, some gangster or something that they were meant to take out. And, uh, in fact, when he, uh, you know, took the hood off and the tape off and the guy started talking to Caleb, he really let him know at this point, this is when it clicked that, you know, uh, something fishy's going here and they just got you, um, you know, doing these, uh, to help them out they're, You're not helping yourself out. And in fact, can you even trust your partner? So, we really start getting that seed, um, and this was a the big theory within the last episode when uh, Dempsey Jr. was dying. He said, "You're the one who did it." So you know, most people, including myself, were like, "Okay, so he's the one who killed Caleb." But now we're figuring out how and why. So we finally get the fight between Dolores and Maeve, uh, the, the fight we've all been waiting for. Uh, Maeve essentially jumps out of her badass drone copter uh, and begins to hunt Dolores down and as they're inside the facility fighting uh, sword slashes and knife slashes and punches and throwing each other into big tanks and shit um, the uh, big drone begins shooting uh, missiles out and uh, firing at Dolores or big ca laser cannons or whatever it's firing um, and kind of splits her up for a minute and gets her out into the courtyard and as we're uh, you know switching from that fight over to uh, Caleb we're learning that um, you know, through this uh, guy who's tied up, this prisoner, that, uh, you know, oh, I know what's going on here, man. Look, they're taking me out of the picture, but look, you know what's going on with you? You know what they do with these guys? They send two of you in, and then they have one, one of your friends kill you, um, take you out of the picture, because they it's one less person they have to worry about. So I'm just letting you know that your buddy's probably going to take you out and me out, both. Uh, he probably got paid a fat wad for it, but look, if you help me out, I'll pay you. Um, and he's just like, what? So I was used even further like that? Passed pawn, passed pawn, passed pawn. Um, everybody's being used for somebody else's uh, plan. It's pretty crazy, man. So the scene plays out, and as they're uh, you know finally leaving the facility with the uh, prisoner, um, that's when Caleb confronts Francis, like, how much are they going to pay you, man? Because really, I mean, uh, this is not going to end well. And he's ultimately left to kill Francis because um, he sees on his phone that even he was then asked to kill him. So they were both asked to kill each other. They were pitted against each other to take each other out by the system. Caleb's infuriated by this information. Um, 
pretty much even calls uh, Solomon an asshole or something along those lines. I mean, he's giving him human insults. He's he's, um, which is interesting. He's treating him like a human. Uh, he's he's like, how could you do this? And um, he's like, it was you know, it was part of the plan then, but now the strategy's changed, and I have the new strategy ready for you. Um, and uh, yeah, he's ready to either um, walk out of the situation furious. Or continue to help uh, fight for Dolores and this new revolution. So we're back outside in the courtyard now as Dolores and uh, Mabe are fighting out there. We have the sniper um, locked and loaded with the drone um, getting shots on Maeve and uh, as they're fighting up close range you know sword slices, knife stabs. Um, we have Maeve's big copter drone also shooting. Um, so they're both using technology in this fight um, and as we're thinking, Dolores kind of has an upper hand. Boom. The big drone's got a shot on her, and it takes her arm off, dude. Blasts it off. Um, Dolores, of course, at this point is, you know, pieces out and starts running into the facility. Extremely damaged. Um, but uh, as she's getting closer and closer, you start seeing what she's heading towards. She's heading towards the big EMP uh, machine. Like, she already almost knows that... Uh, you know, Caleb and Solomon have figured out the plan. Uh, even uh, Maeve starts figuring out. She can, you know, sense in there. She finds out Caleb's in there talking on the microphone. She's like, oh, so you have a human working for you, huh? So it kind of slows her down, her, her stroll there as she's walking to go kill Dolores. And uh, as Caleb gets the uh, strategy and uh, starts heading down, uh, Dolores pops the EMP and shuts down both of them this is done for they're like what what the f dude um so they're they're off but again i think it's part of the plan and we'll see uh in the previews but uh, uh essentially uh caleb's got the key now now he's got the key to both uh civilizations and to the future of the planet in his hands right now. He's got the whole world in his hands. We then get another shot of Bernard, uh, Stubbs, and William as they're at some you know gas station somewhere. Um, the riots are getting pretty crazy here now. There's dead people everywhere, um, whether they killed themselves or were killed by somebody. But um, as they're kind of figuring out what their next step is, um, William walks in to take a piss, and he's the only human, finds a shotgun, and pulls it on both of those guys, and that's how that uh, interaction ends. So I'm curious, since we're about to get to the finale, how they're all, how their stories are going to go. But we do know from the scene that William is going to essentially take out, uh, or it happened earlier in the episode, but he says that he's going to take out all the hosts and finally wash free um, of uh, his past, um, including helping build and grow the technology of Westworld and uh, essentially putting him in the mess that they are all in at this point. Um, he's kind of blaming on himself, but he's going to try to fix it. And uh, he's going to take out every last one of them, starting with Bernard and Stubbs, just like he said. So we'll see where that goes, right? Um, but we end the episode then as Caleb finds uh, the facility shut off and finds uh, Dolores and Maeve laying there. Um, ends up picking up um, Dolores, and uh, as he does, uh, one of the um, uh, robots at the facility that is walking around comes up and is like, Caleb, I have instructions for you. So uh, I don't know what those instructions are, but uh, we'll see here on next week that, uh, in fact, uh, it seems that at least part of it is Dolores being rebuilt with her old robo self. Now what I'm guessing is Dolores hid a, uh, uh, a body of herself, an old school metal body of herself somewhere because it was looked in the previous like to be some locker um, and uh, is, is uh, back in action but with uh, metal reinforcement now. Sword proof, that is. So in the finale, guys, we're going to get to see... Th Possibly the end fight, the big dramatic fight with Dolores versus Maeve, you know, Caleb versus Serac. Um, 
Bernard versus William. <laughs> and uh, what's going to happen with that? And where we're going to go? Because guess what? Uh, Westworld was renewed for season four. So we're definitely going there. And they're planning like five or six seasons of this show. So there's still, you know, a, a ride to go. And I'm wondering where all these characters are going to collide. Is there going to be a big AI, um, you know, human battle? Um, is there going to be a big civil war, you know, of just humans against each other by these riots with AI helping? Is it going to be a, a battle with humans and AI uh, against other humans and AI? Um, because Solomon helped Dolores at this point, and Rehoboam's still doing his own thing. Um, so, who's to say? But shit's getting cray. And uh, we'll see on episode 8, the finale of uh, season 3, what's going to happen next week, guys. So, thanks for joining, as always. Hey, hey Ron. And uh, thanks for coming into Westworldia. Now, get the hell out of here, would you?